there's a ton of noise out there. So how do you get decision makers to pay attention to your brand? Start a podcast and invite your ideal clients to be guests on your show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. Today we are joined by Joe and Bix Bixen. These two guys are experts in the field of future hacking. Bix actually has over 30 years of experience, which means that uh, between these two guys, they have the depth of experience coupled with, of course, Joe's millennial viewpoint. So you've kind of got this marriage of, uh, you know, the, the older generation, sorry, Bix, and the younger generation. <laughs> guys, Joe and Bix, welcome very much to the show. Jonathan, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Thanks for having us. It's great to have you here. Thank you for that. We don't get to do a lot of um, sort of dual interviews, so I think this is particularly exciting for me. I'm excited to hear what you guys are going to be talking about today. But before we kind of get into this idea of you know uh, you know the marketing conversation behind future hacking, uh, maybe you can tell us a little about what you two are up to these days. What we've been up to for many, many years, and we continue to evolve, disrupt ourselves, and invent because that's what we invite and challenge our clients to do. Uh, What is it that's really going to allow businesses to create themselves in the 21st century? And we know that there's a lot of things happening in the 21st century. And future hacking really solves the problem of waiting for the world to disrupt your business by allowing you to continuously create and fulfill the future of your choosing. And we really think that given that your focus is so much about marketing, Jonathan, that that's really the core of a marketer's view is how can they engage the world in in a way that is allows them to be as successful as possible. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, so as we're kind of moving forward in this conversation, Bex, you said for many years, you know, you got the same question over and over is, you know, people ask you, uh, how do you market and how would you always answer that? Well, I think that I think that one of the misconceptions is that marketing is different from the work that you do. And so what I've experienced many times is when I've tried to have a marketing conversation, the people I'm talking to, it's much more difficult for them to listen because, as we know, we're all human beings and the people are sitting there with this experience called, oh, here is another something, somebody trying to do something to me. And when I'm able to shift that from doing something to people, to recognizing, oh, I know, we have a very powerful, literally profound body of ideas. And these ideas allow both individuals and organizations to rapidly transform in the face of complex circumstances. And so when I remember to engage people right away in those ideas, begin to invite executives invite people to recognize that we're all living in the conversations we're listening to and right and go to work at that moment with the people I'm speaking with it shifts it from a conversation where I'm trying to do something to people to a conversation we're doing something with people and we know that their experience their intelligence, their commitment, their dedication is way more powerful and important than anything that I'm going to bring. So they then become engaged in this inquiry, in this pathway together, where we're looking at the problems together to be solved. Yeah, that's great. So Joe, I'd like to sort of turn to you for a minute and kind of ask this question, you know, I mean, what is this idea of future hacking? What does it mean? And kind of almost specifically, what does it mean in the world of marketing? Cool, Jonathan, thank you for asking. The, uh, you know, what I want to do is take us to a 103 year old problem. So who had a 103 year old problem? The Boston Red Sox hadn't won for 103 years. And why was that? And so I think inside of this question lies 
a little bit of some information that could be useful for this this whole world of marketing for businesses because I think that what happened is the world's changed. The world has changed from one of linear, you know, I'm a millennial, so of course I have to talk about how I've grown up in a different world than the guy I'm sitting next to here. Uh, And so the old world was, you know, really the businesses that could survive were those that really harnessed linear thinking, you know, absolutely repetitive kind of models, uh, consistency over time. If you could nail those, you were in the in the sweet spot. Yeah, that and was so, how you had longevity. You 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 stayed the course. You found what worked, and that yeah. and you and you did it well, and you you powered through in that direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so what happened with this baseball team is they broke the curse after 103 years of of losing. They broke the curse, and and how did they break it? Well, they had the same same players as the other team, same kind of players, same. You know, four bases, same three strikes, same field, same game. And so what changed? Well, what what I'm interested in in this business of future hacking is this whole world of a shift in people recognizing that you got to play a different game. And the game is understanding the business landscape. And how do you understand it? It's through data. And so the, those businesses that are really looking towards the future, that are really understanding that they have to reinvent themselves, are looking at themselves, looking at their competition, looking at the data, that's, and they're bringing it together in a way that they can harness it and act differently. And that's the whole game. And so for marketers, if you can look at the data that, that your competitors are showing you, that the customers that you've got are showing you, that your internal staff, you know, their performance, their their metrics, their KPIs, if you can begin to look at that and understand it in a way that allows you to act differently, you're going to be able to break the curse. You're going to be able to do what the what these incredible baseball teams did, that they looked at the data and they shifted the whole thing. And so the guy, you know, Theo Epstein was the guy that, that managed to change understand that the, the world's changed and i think businesses can understand that too and if they if they do they have some very powerful ways to approach the future with this whole business of future hacking got it so i mean it, you know it kind of sounds like there is definitely an element of uh of adaptability you know you have yeah. to be able to be um more nimble than yeah. you know in your business than you were before is there still a time and a place to stay the course to you know stick to your guns i mean are you you know how often are you constantly looking at these metrics i mean we're all we're constantly flooded with information right you know we have all this information at our fingertips but using it and and using it wisely to to power your business decisions i think is infinitely more difficult than just collecting information i mean we've got we've got programs we've got software we've got computers to just collect the information but what do you do with it how do you turn that into this idea of future hacking well i think uh if you sit down with any executive and in this case a marketer sees the world and understands the world and is committed to having the people they work with be able to take on marketing initiatives, programs, ways of translating that company's, that product's marketing commitment into the world. And if you sit down with most executives, what they'll tell you about is the difficulties with their team. And if you ask them about the future, mostly what they'll tell you is about the past. So there you are attempting to create a powerful marketing campaign for a company. Well, it's only going to be as powerful as the people in that company are able to engage in it, align on it, and commit to it. And most of the time, when people are speaking with one another, somebody says something and they don't see and they see a different world than the person that's speaking is attempting to create. So the marketer, the people that are attempting to create these initiatives, their job is to engage the people with whom they're working and the world in this new conversation. And so our work is really about 
teaching people, engaging people, challenging people. So the first thing they can see is years ago, Magellan went around the world. And he came to a place on the southern coast of South America. And he had to restock his ships. And so the guys got off the boat, went into the jungle and the forest to begin to restock their ships. Magellan standing on the beach. Somebody from South America came down to the beach. So there's Magellan. There's the guy from South America <laughs> standing on the beach. And the guy from South America, and however they could communicate, says to Magellan, how did you get here? Magellan, standing on the beach, looks out into the harbor and says, on those ships. The guy from South America, standing on the beach, looks out into the harbor and says, what ships? So when we're engaged in future hacking, we ask people, where were the ships for the people in South America. And eventually somebody will say they didn't exist. And we say, yes, Magellan had the wherewithal to understand, to, under, to experience that the person standing next to him had the same type of eyes, the same kind of eyes that he has, but wasn't seeing what he's seeing. And so he knew at that time, oh, I have to create the idea of ships. And when he created the idea of ships, the person from South America could say, oh, ships, that's our job. So we think that people see what we see. And when they don't see it, we get more and more frustrated or we get more and more skeptical and eventually cynical. Oh, I can't get of these people to see what I see. Oh, how come this campaign isn't working? Why isn't this happening? No. What we have to get good at is creating the world that we're committed that other people can see that's possible and building pathways for other people to see that world with us. Yep, yep. I see exactly what you're saying. Uh, and, and Bix had shared something with me before um, today's episode that, you know, at all times and in all circumstances, we can create and fulfill the future of our choosing. So, you know, I think that you know, that story and that lesson is 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 right on point with sort of that being a, a huge takeaway um, from today's interview. So Joe and Bix, um, you guys are definitely up to some very cool things um, at, uh, at Bix and Squared. If anyone in our audience, if anyone listening is interested in finding out a little bit more about today's episode, finding out more about what you and your team are up to, um, want to learn more about you know this idea of future hacking, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Thanks for asking, Jonathan. We've got a website called Bixon2.com, and you can spell Bixon as B as in boy, I-C-K-S-O-N. To number two dot com, and you can go on there and download. We've got a guide. If if you are a person inside of a company, how do you, how do you future hack? And so you can go and download the guide from our website uh, if you're more interested in more information. Fantastic, uh, Joe and Bix. Thanks again so much for uh, for taking some time out of your day today to join us on the show. It was a pleasure having you here, Jonathan. It's so great. I appreciate your listening and engaging with you and we just appreciate the invitation so thank you very very much thanks for having us on jonathan to ensure that you never miss an episode of the b2b growth show subscribe to the show in itunes or your favorite podcast player this guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device if you'd like to connect with b2b executives from all over the world make sure to join our private facebook community there are some incredible conversations happening inside this group to join, visit b2bgrowthshow.com slash fb. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.